hairs on your neck stand, shivers down your spine You can feel the presence of it, evil never dies Witness the face of Satan, you can see it in the eyes A demon in disguise doesn't mean he ain't alive The hell awaits the wicked, you'll be greeted by demise Immediately following the Beatles and the f I'm gonna tell you a true crime story about a serial killer that you may have not heard of named Chang Pang. Chang Pang was a dog breeder that trained dogs. His dogs were so well trained that a famous Chinese director cast one of his dogs in a lead role in his movie. They even allowed Chang Pang to be the body double for the main actor in the movie. They would later find out that not only was Chang Pang a serial killer, but the well trained dog in the movie had been eating human flesh. Come join me at the Murder She Shed for this strange true crime story. And my name is Holly. If you smash my sexy subscribe button, you can join me here usually two times weekly. Right here with little me inside of my she shed. Just smash it. You know you want to. My button. My button. Don't have dirty minds. Don't be like that. Jesus doesn't like that. First, before we get started... As you can see, I'm very Southern, and these are Chinese names I'm going to pronounce. So, therefore, I'm going to screw them up, just so you know, before we start this true crime story. Even Googling them, I'm still a little confused. So, I'm just going to do the best I simply know how to do. Now, let's get started. In 1993, the famous director Zha Jian went to Ningxia to direct a movie called An Old Man and His Dog. The theme of the film tells the story of an old man, a woman, and a dog. Only problem is they needed a well-trained dog since the dog had a leading role in the movie. They had plenty of dogs to pick from, but none seemed to be perfect for the role. The director knew the dog could either break or make the movie and knew he could not make a mistake in picking the dog. Film crew published an ad in the local newspapers and on the TV that they were searching for any puppies that could fit the rug. Different individuals would bring their dogs, but they would not receive the director's approval, like any of them. One day, an individual came to the director and said, Hey, I know a young man that trains dogs, and I believe his dogs would be perfect for this movie. So the director, Xin Jing, went to meet Chang Pang and asked him about his legendary dogs. Chang was like, Sure, let's do this. But if I let you use my dog in this movie, you need to give me a part in the movie too. So this is how he became the star's body double. Chang played the body double's parts when the actor was on horseback every time the actor would be seen from the back. The only thing is after they released the movie, Chang Pang's past would come to light, which would cause the movie to be banned for two decades. Chang Pang was born in 1962 to parents that led privileged lives and took great care of their young son. However, Chang himself proved to be a problematic child as he was expelled from junior high school for beating a teacher who had scolded him for bullying other children. Through his father's contacts, however, he was given a job at the Lin Key Forestry Institute where he proved to be unpopular among his colleagues due to his rude demeanor and overspending. Due to his dissatisfaction with his salary, Chang would eventually start stealing various items from his workplace. In 1982, Chang decided to steal a TV, and his father, who thought his son needed to learn a lesson, refused to pay his bail. So Chang ended up in prison for two years. After he was released from prison, his parents set him up with an older woman who they thought could keep Chang in line, but... Apparently, she didn't have time to crack her whip because she was always working, which left Chang plenty of time to start causing trouble again. You like that cracked whip effect? You should have seen me crack the whip on those fools. Anyway, this left Chang plenty of time to start causing trouble again. Not long after getting married, Chang met a 24-year-old woman named Hugh on a train. Apparently, Chang captured her heart on that train with his pickup lines. Girl, are you a train? Because I want to ride that caboose. Girl, do you want to play trains? Sit on my face while I chew chew. No, no, never mind. I kid, I kid. Sorry about that. Pick up lines. Just had to add them. Talking about train. You need to pick up line on train, I'm sure. All right, enough bad jokes. But he probably didn't use my amazing pickup lines. He did end up getting laid, though. 
He would often bring his new mistress, Hugh, back home with him while his wife was working. One morning, after spending the night with Hugh at his house, Chang began to worry that his wife might return home soon and thus urged his mistress to leave. But she decided to put on some makeup on before she left. As my husband says, it never hurts a little pain on the barn. But Chang must have not thought that was true because Chang noticed a pipe wrench placed behind the door and while Hugh was not looking, he picked it up and hit her on the head, killing her instantly. In order to get rid of the body, he removed the clothes and then placed the body in the bathtub where he dismembered it with a machete and then buried the remains in the backyard and also burned the clothes. Following Hugh's murder, Chang suddenly had a hankering to start a dog farm. Nothing gets you in the mood for a dog farm like a murder, I guess. I wouldn't know. Anyway, he started this dog farm. He fenced off an area in his backyard, and his dog farm soon grew to 30 wolf dogs. These dogs would soon come in handy as he used them to help dispose of the bodies of his victims. He soon talked his cousin Shay into helping him rob various establishments in order to make quick cash. First, they stole weapons from a warehouse at his job. After he collected several GUNs, he decided to add another accomplice to his gang. Just because I can, I'm just going to call him the Chang Gang. I don't think they had a name, but that's what we're going with today. And why not? I can. It's my story. They decided to get revenge for one member of the Chang Gang by stealing money from the man's boss, but first they needed a car. So on December 22nd, 1990, the chain gang took their GUNs and went to the train station, where they planned to select a driver who would drive them to the boss, Mr. Lee's offices, and then kill the driver and steal his vehicle. In the end, they found their target in a man named Yang, who drove a white minivan. While Yang was driving, Chang announced that Yang needed to pull over at the side of the road. So he and Shay could get out and take a leap. You know, sometimes you have to. After exiting the vehicle, Shay attempted to shoot Yang, but apparently forgot how to aim because he hit the side of the driver's door. But for some reason, Yang just thought the noise had came from a flat tire. At that moment, Chang shouted that somebody was shooting at them, making the frightened man jump back into the car. And so they all drove away at full speed. Eventually, at Chang's request, Yang drove them back to his house, where he was invited to have some tea. On Chang's suggestion, Yang entered first, giving an opportunity for Shai to take out his GUN and actually hit him this time in the back of the head, killing him on the spot. The men took off the victim's clothes and then dismembered his body with machetes, some parts of which Chang fed to his dogs. What the dogs didn't eat, they buried in his backyard. Since the minivan had been damaged, the pair decided it'd be best just to get rid of it. So they drove to a parking lot where they abandoned it and left. For about a half a month after the murder, they laid low before deciding they needed to attempt to get another vehicle. They decided to steal a taxi driver named Zhang's vehicle. But being the lame aim Shay was, he missed and shot the windshield. This frightened Zhang, who quickly got out of the car and started running away, shouting that they were attempting to kill him. Panicked that they were going to get caught. The gang got out of the car and started chasing him, with Chang firing several shots in Zhang's direction, making him slow down and allowing his pursuers to catch up with him. Zhang then knelt and begged for them to spare him, only for Chang to sneer at him and shoot him in the head. Somehow I don't think shots would make me slow down. I think I could literally jump anything at that point. I don't know how it made him slow down, unless he actually got shot a little bit, maybe that might have been. It didn't say that. It just said it made him slow down, so I don't know. They then drove to Chang's house, where they fed what they could to Chang's dog, burying the rest of the body in his backyard. Since the corpse were beginning to pile up, Chang put a layer of concrete over the locations where he had buried the remains. After disposing of the remains, Che asked Chang what they should do with the car, to which the latter replied, it would be better to get rid of it since it was damaged. They really just don't seem that bright, do they? Killed two people for a vehicle. I still haven't accomplished it. It's not the brightest gang we're working with here. The gang drove the taxi to a bathhouse where they abandoned it at the parking lot and left. 
I guess they then totally abandoned the idea of getting money from the boss, Mr. Lee. Yeah, I definitely wasn't the brightest serial killer. Sometime in the winter of 1991, Chang was dancing in a ballroom when he noticed a young woman who was also dancing. Her name was Miss Lu, a cotton factory worker in her early 20s. Chang approached her. They agreed to meet up the next evening at the ballroom. On the following night, the pair met up again and spent the night dancing and having a good time. After this, Chang took her out for dinner before proposing that they go to his house, to which Lu agreed. For an indeterminate amount of time later, the pair began an affair while his wife was working. Lou then revealed that her family was actually helping her find a partner whom she could marry. But as they had no money, she searched for somebody who appeared rich so he could pay some of the wedding costs. You know, weddings are expensive and all. Anyway, amount to about 3,000 yen. Chang asked for 10 days to gather the money. Lou accepted his proposal. When the agreed day came, Chang invited Lu to his house after spending the night together. They got up in the early morning, and while she was putting on her makeup, I don't know what he has about this deal with makeup, but he grabbed his G-U-N and shot her in the head. He then stripped Lu of her clothing, tied a rope around her neck, and dragged her body to his backyard where he left it to be devoured by his dogs. After checking on it three days later, he found nothing except the head, some leftover bones, and the rope. Shortly afterwards, Chang threw the head into the bullet room, buried the bones in the backyard, and burned the clothes. Right after this is when Chang and his human-eating dogs appeared in the movie, An Old Man in His Dog. After the film's release, it proved to be a commercial success in China and actually won several awards, leading to further interest being drawn to Chang as a dog breeder. As a result, many customers came to his farm to either observe or buy some of his dogs. One of these people was a woman named Miss Yu, a married woman who was seven years older than Chang and had been part of the film crew for an old man and his dog. The two soon started an affair. At some point, Chang gave her a spare key and told her she could visit him anytime she wanted so as long as his wife was not at home. In April 1994, Yu called Chang to ask if she could visit him the next day. As they had not seen each other for a long time since Yu's father had died and she had to return home to attend his funeral, Chang accepted her offer. On the next day, the pair met up, dined at a high-end restaurant. He wined and dined her. Then they went to a karaoke hall before eventually returning to Chang's house. After having SEX, Yu suddenly revealed to him that she was pregnant and the child was likely his. You know where this is going. She was unaware that Chang did not want children with anybody besides his wife, and upon being informed of this, he instantly made a plan to get rid of her. Although, as you know, it didn't take much for Chang to want to kill someone. You guessed it, as she was putting on her makeup, he shot her in the back. She lay bleeding out in the floor, looking up at him as he watched her die. Unlike his previous victims, he did not dismember her remains and instead buried her whole body in his backyard. He burned some paper on top of the grave as a last send-off. How sweet. What a gentleman. Let's give him a little credit here. Not. Jerk off. Approximately a month after Yu's murder, Chang was unexpectedly visited by a man wearing glasses and riding a bicycle. While he was initially confused about who the man was, he introduced himself as an old classmate from junior high school. Ma Wei, according to Ma, he had heard from friends that Chang was in the dog breeding business. And since he had recently bought 10 Mastiffs, which he did not really know how to train, he came to him for advice. Chang agreed, and after Ma left, he, did, he just realized that this kind of breed of dog was sold for a lot of money. He called Shay and informed him of the new money opportunity, with the latter agreeing to help him out. On the next day, Shay visited Chang, and the pair began waiting for their target. But when Ma arrived, they were shocked to realize that he was a police officer. While both men contemplated luring him into the house and killing him right there, Chang indicated that, hey, it might be a bad idea if we kill a police officer. And they let Ma live. Hey, he used his brain for once. Proud of you, Chang. Proud of you. After this incident, he helped several additional people in the dog breeding business. 
This caught the attention of two former classmates, Zhang Ming and Mr. Wang. I'm not going to go there with the Mr. Wang thing. I'm probably saying it wrong, but Wang. <laughs> Sorry. Wang means a whole new thing here. Zhang Ming and Mr. Wang, who were the managers and deputy managers of a trading company. At first, Zhang approached him under the pretense of helping him raise some dogs, but later on, he led Chang into a business opportunity relating to buying cashmere wool for 1.5 million yen. Chang agreed, but Zhang asked him to be given some time to gather the money, to which Chang agreed. A former classmate of Chang's named Li came and asked Chang about his business too. The two eventually became close friends, and after listening to Li complain about his low wage for some time, Chang asked him if he was willing to be recruited for a quick money-making scheme. Li then said that as long as it would make money, he was willing to do anything, and immediately agreed. Zhang soon informed Chang that he had managed to gather the 1.5 million yen and that the money was at his house. He offered Zhang to visit him one day so they could make the deal. So Chang informed his new friend, Li, it was time to come to his house and help him steal Zhang's money. After the three men ate dinner at Chang's house, Zhang fell into deep sleep because Chang had spiked his food with sleeping pills. As an initiation ritual, he gave a GUN to Li and told him to kill Zhang, but Li refused and returned the GUN. Chang then shot Zhang in the head, killing him instantly. The pair then dragged his body to the backyard and, guess what, gave some to his dog before they buried it and traveled to Zhang's house to get the money. To Chang's surprise, however, he only found a few hundred yen. So apparently, Zhang was messing with Chang, too. Mm. Twist the fate. Believing that Zhang had likely hidden it somewhere, he thought of asking his wife, but as asking directly would make it seem suspicious, he thought up a plan to extract information from her. You know it's not going to be bright at this point. We know it's not going to be a very bright plan. His plans weren't the brightest. On the following evening, Chang went to a payphone and called Zhang's house. When his wife answered, he pretended to be an anonymous business partner and explained the situation, but Zhang's wife said that she knew nothing of the money and told him to ask her husband. After finishing the call, Miss Zhang became worried and called Mr. Wang to ask him where her husband was. Wang said that he had not seen him for the past two days, so he decided to call Zhang's phone. But it was Chang who answered. Chang told him that Zhang had given him his phone. Mr. Wang called Zhang's wife and told her the name of the man who had Zhang's phone. After hearing this, Miss Zhang felt that she had heard the name Chang before, realizing that it was her husband's old classmate, Chang Pang, who was also likely the same person who had called her anonymously on the phone. She pondered on the situation for the next few days before eventually contacting the police to file a missing persons report. After describing the strange circumstances that had occurred, the authorities immediately started investigating Chang. Upon learning that Chang was also the last person to have seen Zhang alive, he was summoned to the police station on January 16th for questioning. Chang explained in a calm and collected manner that Zhang had sold drugs with his relatives and that he had borrowed 3,000 yen and the telephone from him. Chang's claims were investigated after talking to the relative that supposedly was selling drugs with Zhang. A relative just chuckled and said that he would never engage in such a thing. Two days later, police officers took Chang back to his house to check for clues. Since he was not considered a suspect at this time, he was not handcuffed and was allowed to just roam freely under supervision. When they arrived at the house, he informed them that he had to go and lock up his dogs, which the officers permitted. Upon entering the yard, Chang jumped on top of the kennel and onto the roof before jumping down and fleeing the area. This act was seen by the officers, but as they were unfamiliar with the property's layout and were blocked off by the dogs, they were unable to catch him. Nonetheless, authorities continued to investigate the house, finding numerous incriminating items inside. They found numerous weapons along with bloodstains, 
throughout the house. After sending it off, they were able to confirm it was human blood. They then found human bones in the dog pens and dug up the bodies out of Chang's backyard. Chang was able to evade authorities for a few months by becoming an assistant to a witch doctor. He eventually got tired of that and returned to a relative's house to hopefully get a job at the relative's factory. While Chang was treated to a cup of tea and some cigarettes, a relative suddenly realized that the man he had seen on the wanted poster a few days ago was actually Chang. After contemplating whether he should turn him in or not, he told a security guard to inform the police while he kept Chang distracted. When members of the local police station were informed of the situation, six officers were dispatched immediately to the factory to arrest the fugitive. Upon arriving, they dressed up in plain clothes and pretended to be customers. Entered the offices. When they saw that Chang was not paying attention, two of the officers pushed him to the ground and immediately arrested him. The whole gang was eventually arrested. During an interview, Chang confessed to his crimes and bragged that they would never find all the body parts since he had fed them to his dogs. Chang also expressed no remorse for his crimes and said that his victims, especially the women, deserved to be killed for interfering with his family matters. Chang was sentenced to death and was immediately shot along with his dogs, including the dog that appeared in the movie. Due to the notoriety surrounding the film, it was banned for more than two decades before the ban was rescinded sometime during the 2010s. The movie can now be viewed on YouTube, but unless you can understand Chinese, you might as well not watch it. You won't understand it. This is the story of the serial killer that became a famous movie star, along with his human eating dog. Yep, I know almost unbelievable, but most definitely a true crime story. Now, I'll leave you guys with a few bloopers, and I hope you guys have an amazing, blessed week. Love y'all. Bye. His dogs were so well-trained, unlike mine. Untrained dog, that never minds, right there. The meanie, but I love him. If you smash my sexy subscribe button, you're not making this sexy. If you smash my sexy subscribe button, you can join me in my she shed usually. <laughs> oh my god. If you smash my sexy subscribe button. Oh, love you, Bubba. I love you, Bubba. You're my best friend, Bubba. You're a good boy, Simo. Just smash it. You know you want to. Keep Chang in line. Choo -choo. Choo -choo. How does it go? Choo. Time to crack her whip. Choo -choo. What am I trying to say? Choo -choo. Wait, I forgot already. I thought I could keep Ching Chang, Ching Chang, Ching Chang, Ching Chang. It didn't take much for Chang to want to kill someone. Just like to do that, I guess, under the pretense of helping him raise some dogs. Started to say elephants. I don't know where they came from. Maybe I should start back over. Although I'm pretty sure this whole video was basically a blooper because that's just being stupid, I think. Sorry about that. Um, so I act like Chang Yang, I guess. I fear it in my heart that you're going to start acting up. Take a chill pill. Take a chill pill. Oh, and the crunch. Ow. You need a puppy, you took a meal. Oh, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, nice, 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 nasty boy. You nasty, nasty boy. Dog hair mama. Happens that not the best of us. Jesus loves the little son. Most all the Samos of the world. He loves his Samo. His Samo. Cool. <laughs> in yellow, black, and white, Simon is precious in his sight. He loves all the little Simons of the world. You see, I like him to be the same to him. He thinks this is amazing, cause we sing about Jesus and Simon. Jesus and Simon. <laughs> Bye. In the belly of the beast, I become the beast master. Fiend, the flesh feast. We complete the bleed faster. The harvest of a sorrow, horror circus is bizarre, yo. Forming puppet shows from a billion souls borrow. Water for your life, or there may be another knife stab. Scared to fall asleep and see the demons in your nightmares. Leader of the wretched, derelicts, and heretics. I'll inject the heifer with the seed of sin to surrogate. Then I'll give her a.